What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sequence. I'm your host, Trevor Plouffe, and today we have another very special guest, one of my favorite teammates I ever played with, 2017 All-Star, Mr. 305 himself, Yonder Alonzo. What's up, Yon? How you doing, man? Not much, man. Just hanging out. It's a little raining here in Miami right now, but uh, got my training in, got my hitting in, and feeling pretty good. Uh, excited to be here. Thank you for the invite, and uh, looking forward to talking some hitting. I appreciate it, man. You, um, you're like perfect for this show, you know, where we kind of talk about hitting a lot and we talk about new age hitting and old age hitting. And you were one of the guys who really benefited from what a lot of people were calling like the swing revolution, where guys are trying to put the ball in the air a little more. Uh, we right. linked up in 2017 with the A's and the f you were the first guy I ever hit with. Do you remember that day in spring training? Yeah, we were in the cage. It was like a, it was a voluntary workout. And we actually, I remember like if it was yesterday, we had the left side of the cage and we were hitting the machine. I think we were doing breaking balls. And uh, yeah, I, yeah, I do. I do remember that, that day. Absolutely. So you were, you spent the entire off season before that making an adjustment. I did as well. Um, I think yours probably worked out for you a little bit better. What was that adjustment you made and, and kind of like why after having already a successful big league career up to that point, why, why the change? So it all started in 2016 when I was in Oakland my first year. And um, I remembered, you know, I was, I was with a good teammate of mine, Danny Valencia. Love and Danny. I remember I used to be, a, I used to be a guy that was a, a foot down type of guy, just trying to be a really good hitter, uh, swing at strikes, be okay with just getting a base hit. Um, shooting the ball all around on a line. And I never forget, like, it was towards the end of the, the year in August. And, and Valencia kind of came up to me one day. We we're, were in the cage. And, you know, he said, hey, I just don't see you have so much more potential in there. You know, the way you lift, the way you're built, the way you carry yourself, the, the approach that you have at the plate. I'm just not okay with you, you know, being a, a 280, 290 hitter with 10 homers and yeah, sure, you know, your on-base percentage is over 360 and, you know, you're driving in some runs and you can hit 30, 35 doubles, but I just see more in there, more in that body. And and I, I'm not okay with, you know, because we were talking about hitting and his evolution. And he's like, I'm just not okay with your approach of, you know, being in a hitter's count and just being a, being satisfied with a with a ground ball to the left side over, you know, in between 30 and short for a base hit. You know, I just think that you should take advantage of those things. And people are just pumping you heaters because they know that you just don't have that power that can come with it. And, and people are just not afraid of you. They're just attacking you at all times. So I said, well, what should I do? And he says, well, I think you should really, you know, give your A swings, you know, not just your, your two strike approach. And from there on out, you know, I was a, I was a little bit upset uh, because I wasn't playing as much anymore. Um, I was very down on myself, you know, realizing that that there was so much more in there. And I needed to really go in my video room and, and realize, OK, if I'm going to make a change, where does it start? And I was very mm -hmm. realistic with myself. Right. I was saying, what is it that you do bad? And for me, it was a lack of power, a lack of obviously playing the corner precision was a, a guy that can just pretty much carry the team and mm -hmm. for a week at a, a week's at a time and just realizing that you know i'm here to do take care of this game today mm -hmm. is, is my turn and it just wasn't happening for me so i started just watching video of, of all the guys that i like so i picked I about three or four left handed hitters that i wanted to kind of be like mm -hmm. but on my own terms right you know I, I knew in the back of my head that i had a good hand-eye coordination mm -hmm. i knew i had a really good approach now it was a matter of me mechanically seeing what was wrong with me and what i really realized with these four or five guys is how well their lower half was working compared to mine i mean it was basically there was no lower half for me at all it was all just handsy very handsy and for me my thought was always you know your hands are, are your best friends your hands mm -hmm. are your best friends and I just forgot completely about my lower half. So I just started, I remember it was like one of the first year of Odor. And, and you know, we were playing Texas quite a bit. Uh -huh. And I remember this little guy, right? He was like 5'7", <laughs> right? 5'6", 
you know, using a 35 ounce bat and he is just turning on balls. Like big power. This guy is hitting, yeah, big barrel. This guy looks like he's 6'5, the wind ball can <laughs> come out of the bat. And he was taking people left center in Oakland on a night game, left mm-hmm. center, center. Mm-hmm. I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. If this guy can do that, I need to start figuring out what's going on with me. Yeah, because you're a big so guy. Started, like you have right. You have the yes. power. Yeah, so I started I started dissecting his at bat from the side. I'll never forget. I told the video guy in Oakland. Um, I said to him, Hey, I need you today. We were playing the Rangers. I need you to videotape Odor's at bats from the side, from the angle. He's like, all right, cool. So he Love did that. that. Then we then we played uh the Royals and I said, Hey, I need you to videotape Hosmer's side <laughs> angle. So we did that. Uh, whatever, you know. So I, yeah. I had like four or five guys that I really liked. Um, and, and then I, Donaldson was one of them. He was already with Toronto. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I want you to do Toronto, uh, with Donaldson. Um, and and then there was a couple other guys that I wanted to do. And what I did was I, I videotaped all these guys that I liked. And I said, okay, I'll never forget. I called my, my hitting coach here in Miami, Mike Tozar. And I said, we're going to make a big change and nobody, I'm, nobody's going to know about it. I want it to be a secret. Um, I don't need to tell anybody. Now I'm going into my free agency year. So I'm going mm-hmm. into my third year of arbitration for the next year. Mm-hmm. I'm like, nobody's going to know about it. This is going to be a surprise. I don't want nobody to know. It's going to be a leak. And he's, he said to me, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to go with a leg kick. Either I knock people out or people are just going to knock me out and then I'll be okay with it. Yeah. But it's time for me to make a change and I'm going to take my A swings at all times. And if I strike, you know, I had never struck out a hundred times. And I said, yeah. if I strike out 120 times, but I happen to put the ball in play, you know, let's just say I got to run into 30 balls. Mm-hmm. If I run into 30 balls, that's 30 homers. I got to run into 30. I don't care if I have 250 anymore. You know, I'm not going to hit 250, yeah. but if I do hit 250, I'm going to hit 30. Mm-hmm. So we said, okay, I love it. Now, what's, what's the plan? I said, don't worry. The plan is, is getting started. <laughs> the, the plan's already going. Yeah. You know, so this is around like September 1st. So I started messing with the leg kick. In, in, in like batting practice and in the cage. And Valencia started helping me a little bit with the leg kick. And mm-hmm. he was kind of telling me about rhythm and when to get started and this and that. So long story short, we're in the last series of 2016 and we're playing the Mariners. And it's like, what do you have to lose? Just go with the leg kick, right? <laughs> Who cares? Just go with it. If you go for four, so be it. Yeah. Well, that day, I went three for four with two doubles. And I hit two doubles that were like off the end of the bat and it hit the wall. And my BP was just like crazy BP, mm-hmm. like the power I was hitting. In BP, I would never even hit the ball to center field for homers. Now I'm going way past. <laughs> that. Like I'm going left center homer, center homer. I'm like, I think I got something here, right? Like I think I really got something here. So I left it at that, and and I and I left and I when I got to Miami, I'll never forget. It was like a weekend to the off season, and I said, call my hitting coach. I go, let's go. We're gonna start hitting. He's like, well, I think it's early. I said, no, yeah. no, it's not early. Let's go. We're gonna start hitting. We're gonna we're gonna figure this out. Mm-hmm. So Manny, who's my brother-in-law, he said, "Hey, uh, I'm gonna join you guys." You know, so we because he had kind of a leg kick as well. Mm-hmm. So what I started doing is I started calling people. So I started calling Hosmer, talked to Adore, talked to Donaldson, talked to a couple guys about leg kick and approach and mindset and what they were thinking about. And I started realizing that, you know, this is kind of for me. You know, this is this is really happening. So I went with a bigger bat. You know, all of them kind of said, use a bigger bat. And Adore was kind of like the first guy to tell me, use a big bat. Because you can feel your legs better. You can feel your legs when you're swinging the big bat. When you're, when you're using kind of a, a lighter bat, you tend to get very muscly and very upper body-ish. Okay. So you want to feel that lower half when you're training. So I got myself a 38-ounce bat. I mean, this thing was a tree. <laughs> but what it taught me was... It, it taught me how to realize what my legs were really doing. And, yeah. and it wasn't like I was swinging the bat with my, my hands. I was really swinging the bat and the bat speed with my legs and my hips. And Yeah, you, you can't know, swing a bat out. that big with your hands. Just, if just your upper body, no, you're not going to be able to do it. No, I think if you take 100 swings with that, that size of a bat, you're, you're, the next day you're, you're done. Uh-huh. Right? You're gassed. So I started realizing how important really the lower half was. Mm. And... Uh, yeah, it took off. It took off. And I'll never forget. I wanted to hit. So we took about three months just hitting in the cage, like really fine-tuning things. I mean, I was videotaping me every day. We were going back at night. 
in the day. I mean, we were doing two sessions a day, really to hone in and clean, clean up everything that was going on with this new way, right? This new model. And I, I'll never forget. I said, ground balls are, are not it in this game. I'm going to hit the ball in the air at all times. If I hit a ground ball, I'm not going to beat it. I'm not going to beat it out. So it's got to be a knockout at all times. And I started realizing my potential. So three months are in, in the off season and I'm like jittery. Like, when are we going to get outside? I want to see how far these balls are going. <laughs> and that's a good we feeling. Did that. Yeah, that's a good feeling. And, and I've never done that. My BPs were always like line drives. Oh, what a great day. You know, I hit a hundred line drives. Well, <laughs> okay, that's it. Cool. Go home. You know? So the first day we get out there to BP on the field, I mean, everything was just dead center homers at all times. And I was just like, you know, my hitting coach was like, this is going to work. <laughs> Valencia came to, Valencia came, and he was like, yeah, this is going to work. And yeah, from there on on, I, I, we went to spring training and, and I was like, oh man, I cannot wait. I just cannot wait to get my hands on, on a game and just really, you know, showing off a little bit. And so we had practice the first day in spring training. It was like that individual practice where you hit mm-hmm. BP. And, you know, it's Arizona, you know, and Bob Melvin throwing gas BP. And, you know, you're feeling nice and saucy, like, you know, pearls. You're fresh and pearls every day. Yeah. And I must have taken five rounds and I must have hit about 15 homers, 20 homers. <laughs> and, you know, everybody was just like, what, what did you do? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I changed my whole swing and my whole mentality. So then I started getting a little bit, you know, confident and, you know, cocky just kind of like all right here i come like i'm gonna you know kick butt and i'm gonna take care of this whole game right Mm -hmm. this this is my game today today is my turn to turn on and yeah that's how it that's how it all went did you talk to bushy at all i did see it yeah so i i I talked to bushy bushy is the oakland a's hitting coach for people who don't know so right and and bush bushy was so good because he let me be right and Mm -hmm. we had like an hour talk one day before the season was over and I told him I changed. I said, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go with a leg kick and I'm going to go big or go home. And he says, I love it. You know, you got to do it. You got to do it. And I said, all right, but when I come back, this is going to be a surprise. Nobody's going to know about this other than you and a couple other guys. And that's it. I said, all right, let's do it. And I came back the, the next following uh, year. And, you know, my whole swing had changed literally from the ground up. And, and it all literally started with my mindset not being scared to change, yes. not being scared to fail, and being willing to go for it at all costs. You know, you wanted to be on your terms, so you said, "I'm gonna like this right. was you." You signed a deal in arbitration after the 2017 season. You were gonna be a free agent, so it's like, "Hey, man, right. if you're gonna go, now is the time to go." And yeah, I remember Billy Bean call, called me during that arbitration uh, hearing, and. He didn't know what I was doing in the offseason. Mm-hmm. And I told him, I said, Billy, I changed my whole swing. You know, and it kind of sucks because I'm going to make you the smartest GM all over. <laughs> because here's this guy who you picked up from San Diego who was just like a slap hitter. And I'm going to be an all-star. I'm going to hit 30 homers. And then you're going to trade me in the trade deadline because there's this guy by the name of Matt Olson who's going to be yeah. a stud this time right he's in double a hitting 35 homers and i'm gonna make you smart again but it's okay and he said to me well you know you have two months to prove that to me and i said two months it's gonna start today in spring training Uh so i went into spring training with that idea of i'm already fighting to for for next year like for free agency like i'm not i wasn't even fighting for me when was my last days with oakland it was gonna be no I'm going to fight for free agency. Like I felt like I was going to stay there the whole year and I was going to be a big mark on, on that, on that team. And you were, and I love this. That's why I said, bro, I have to have you on the show because your story is perfect. Like you had success in the big leagues, but you thought there was more and you were willing to make a change. And not only were you willing to make a change, but you were willing to put the work in. Like you right. said, you were doing it right. every day and you reached out to right. people who had done it and you did the research and it's like, that's how you get confident in making an adjustment is you, you can't just say, right. I'm going to do it. There's work involved right. in it. And what you just told everyone, I mean, you put extensive work into it. Yeah. And I remember like 
I think the extent of the work that I did, you know, it was so long because we're talking about, you know, almost five months in the off season doing this work every single day. Like Sundays I was hitting, Saturdays I was hitting, two mm-hmm. days. That kind of hurt me a little bit in the second half of the year because I was so exhausted. Sure. But it also led to so many great things and, you know, really realizing what an everyday Yonder Alonso can bring to the table to being at the caliber that I wanted to be at. So I said, you know, it's it's a sacrifice, right? Like you have to just get a, give everything you have and see what happens. Tomorrow, I don't know what might happen. Today, I'm going three for four and I'm taking care of this game. I'm, I might hit two homers today. So that's how I felt. And that was the mentality every day was, you know, once I, I put my uniform on, it was game on, you know, in between those lines, I wanted to just kill or you were going to get killed. So yeah. it was either you... You, you, you're the hunter now. You know, I was mm-hmm. tired of being hunted. Love that. I was tired of these guys just bullying me and pitchers just bullying me and front office kind of bullying me and just, uh, you can't hit righties and you can't hit this guy and you can't hit that guy. And I'm like, no, I really can. I could do it. So I kind of took matters into my own hands and I kind of played that whole year. I played just like angry all the time because mm-hmm. there was so much like anger built inside me of all these years that, I kind of put myself in that situation, Mm -hmm. but just realizing that this is it. Like it's time for me to just become a man and just become that hitter and that fierce guy. And, you know, it it, it really helped me with the guys in Oakland, right? Like, you know, having like Chris Davis, you know, we're seeing there and having Valencia and having uh, Healy who came, having Jed Lari who came and yourself and Matt Joyce, you know, these were guys that, I really wanted it as well. So those guys kind of pushed me to to be that guy. I was just going to say, I missed that team. We had a bunch of like guys who were smart baseball players and like understood yeah. things. Uh, Jed was one of them. Um, uh, Joyce, same thing. Like these guys understand hitting and they're able to talk about it in a way that, you know, I think can really help people. And I think um, there was like an open mindedness in that organization at the time where it's like dude like do what you got to do to to help the team win and if this is what it is like let's talk about it and we're we're all in the cage all the time together talking about swings and right. stuff um so I, I i definitely miss that you know i miss like that team i remember we would take ubers and it would be eight guys on an uber yeah good team you know like everybody was always together you know it was it was fun day games were fun uh, you know, most guys during day games, everybody's exhausted or whatever. And we found a way to enjoy ourselves, have fun and bring it every single day. And like, you know, I really, yeah. really do miss that. I did too. All right, let's get into this a bit. So this is, we talked about you had success in spring training. Um, you came out in April. I think you had like three or four homers. Right. So you're like, okay, like, but you had a decent April, but then May is when you turned it on. So this bat is from May 9th. I think right. you end up hitting that, 12. Before, yeah, before you go to that, I bet. So okay. my goal was to have my goal was to have four homers or five homers a month. Perfect. So that was kind of my goal. My goal was to go in there and say, you know, just four to five homers a month and, you know, hit 300 a month and play gold glove defense, right? <laughs> like, that was my mindset. Just play really it. good defense, have four or five homers a month and, and see what happens, right? And see what happens. And... You know that's that's how it all began yeah so this one so, we're in oakland and mm-hmm. we're playing against the angels and alex myers throwing he's a guy that i was familiar with from the twins days and he's a guy that throws hard yeah uh, command isn't always he there 100. he's got right. a good i think he has like a splitter change up thing that he throws off of that especially to lefties but not an easy yeah. at bet you know a guy that's like okay no. you got to buckle down and 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 and, and get into it with this guy he felt like he was eight feet tall because he's huge. He is. He's like almost seven uh, feet tall. And, <laughs> right. And I remember I had faced him the year before because he had just come up and he just just threw me and I just couldn't catch up to him. You know, and it was I hit I got like a base hit, you know, ground ball base hit. And then other than that, it was just like broken back, getting blown up like two O heaters. Here you go, buddy. See if you can hit it. And I just mm-hmm. couldn't do it. So the following year is the first time I faced him that year. And I'm here thinking like, you think you're going to, 
give me this heat these heaters like no 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 like <laughs> th- i've been preparing for you for a long time there's a lot of anger in, involved right? <laughs> and i went into that day i'll never forget i went into that day and i told bushy i said hey we got to hit early so sorry what do you want to do and it was like 1 30 and i said we're going to do the net drill and we're going to do the net drill on the field because i want to feel super super tight and i really want my lower half to be working and synced in with my backside and i just want to be as tight as possible because i know i'm going to get this 98 and I'm going to be so tight, like it's going to be yeah. so explosive that it's just going to go out. It's going to go anywhere I want. It's I either think, going to go left, it's going to go center, it's going to go anywhere. I think you're talking about the canoe drill. Is that what you're talking about? You put the, it's the canoe drill, right. The L screen yeah. goes in front of the hitter, um, parallel with the, the guy. The, the L, right, so the L screen goes parallel to the, to the hitter in front of home. Like you kind yeah. of split home plate. And you basically align yourself with your bat to be as tight as possible. And then you have a guy who's flipping to you front toss. Mm. And you're just trying. Well, my goal was to hit homers at all time to right center. So yeah. I never wanted to do homers. I never wanted to hit homers to right or ground balls. I wanted to just really hit backspin homers to right center. And you you, you were there. You've yeah. seen a bunch of the, the times that we were out there. And specifically that day, I felt like I needed to be as tight as possible yeah. to try try to get that heater at 98 miles an hour middle end and try to really hit it to the center part of the field and barrel it and and if all, all you got to do with those guys is just touch it yeah just touch you it you know so yeah that drill doesn't it just it doesn't allow you to cast your hands it makes you keep everything in if you right. don't know the drill i'm sure you can google canoe drill and it'll come up it's a very common drill that right. a lot of guys do but it's really it immediately gives you the feeling of keeping your hands in tight and not casting right. them out so you right. did all this Right. right. First, this is at one o'clock. All I'm thinking about is Myers, ninety eight mile an hour fastball. What am I gonna what am I gonna do to it? Well, and then, that's all I was thinking. Yeah, then we get uh, you know, your first at bat here, bottom of the first. And I think people can see a difference. Like when I look at you now, like you look hitterish, bro. Right. You look like you're ready to go. And in years past, maybe not so much, but this is like angry, I'm gonna beat you on the hunter yonder. Yeah. Yeah, like this is my face like you know my wife tells me all the time she's like why do you look so mad you never laugh and i'm like honestly i have so much anger inside me that i just want to see the baseball and just (laughs) literally just hit it out of the ballpark (laughs) you know well first pitch you know i mean you said he blew you up with heaters in years past so you know they're probably just coming heater first pitch 100 percent. are you ready to go pitch one okay all i'm thinking is you know be short like the net drill and catch it out in front catch it out in front all right, first pitch. We got Maldonado back there, who he's a stud, so right. he's a good catcher. Yeah. Really good. Sets up away. And there it so is. I, I mean, just 97. 97, down and in. And I didn't, I, I didn't swing at that because my sights weren't there, right? My sights were up in the zone, kind of more middle-ish, middle away. Like, that was my zone. So if it was anything down and in like that, I just wasn't going to swing at that. You know, I, I was thinking about center field, you know, center field, left center, somewhere around those lines out in front to just crush it. And then he throws me that pitch kind of like down and in, and I'm thinking, okay, we know he's a thrower, right? He mm-hmm. doesn't have that much command. So sure. I know who this guy is. So it's the second, it's the first inning. It's one nothing ball game. Uh, it's early in the game. He just threw me a 98 mile an hour fastball middle end. I just don't think he's going to locate on the black away. So just, forget those sights kind of so much out there kind of just see that that ball right down the middle it's got to be right down the middle and just hit it to center and be out in front on it like just just give me your a swing right here especially one up like i'm one yeah. right now i'm thinking this is my time like i yes. used to i used to mess around a lot with you guys and say this is daddy's time you know this is my time <laughs> one oh it's my time knowing that i know this guy's gonna challenge me you know yeah i mean especially early in the game like you said there's two outs here he is more of a thrower. Right. So you're like, this guy's going to rely on that. Uh, his heater's his best pitch. So right. basically you're locked into a heater. You're saying, put it put it in the middle of the plate and I'm going to do damage on it. That's it. Gets the ball back and yeah, I can see like, you thinking that. That's what I'm thinking about right now. Like as I'm fixing the, my, my stance right there on the dirt, that's all I'm thinking about. I'm saying this is my time and I'm thinking about it. I'm literally just thinking about that. Like be short, be on top of the baseball and let it go. This is your time. 
I can see your face. Look at this face. This is a guy that's locked in, ready to do some damage. Yeah. And look at right there. I mean, you already have your numbers up. I mean, you got the nine homer. So you're feeling saucy at this point because, like I said, I think you only had four in April. So you crushed some balls early in this month. Yeah. Like, you're feeling good. Yo, yeah. Like, this is the second week of May, I want to say. And I already had I – was, I was feeling like – I just have to touch the ball. And Chris Davis used to talk about that all the time. When he, when he was on, on his rolls of hitting a ton of homers, he would tell me all the time, I just feel like I just have to touch it. Yeah, and it's just going to be a homer. That is strong, bro. Right. And I was <laughs> like, you know what? Like, I just got to touch it. I just got to touch it. I love it. All right. So, 1-0, baby. Yeah, this is it. Setting up away again. Mm. There it goes. Dude, that's a swing right there, cause that's like a line drive. Oh yeah, it was a line drive, and it was super. I was super tight, <sighs> and I was like on my backside, and I remember it exploded off my bat, and it was right down the middle, you know. I mean, just the extension, like right. Everything half, about that is awesome. Worked. Lower half, everything was working, and, and it was everything that we had, you know, been practicing all, uh, all day long, pretty much. Yeah. The Raj. So was, hey, there I am. Fun, it was a fun, fun uh, you know, I'm here going around there, like, I'm feeling saucy now. Like, I just took this guy left center with his best stuff. And you see Maldonado saying, hey, that was, you know, middle end, good pitch, so what? You know, he can't do it again. And I'm here thinking, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm, if I have a homer already on my first side bat, there's a good chance I'm going to hit you again. Oof, that's right in your wheelhouse. I love these slow mos. That one we're gonna go back to. You're so you talking about how tight, tight you is. are. Yeah. Right. What I love is your elbow just going straight into the slot. Like right here, you're like you're getting ready to get into launch position. Right. And, wa and watch the elbow kind of act independently back there, the back elbow. Boom. Right. That's it. That's that's net drill right there. Right there. That's net drill right there at one o'clock. Yeah. That's all we were trying to do is get as tight as possible with your with your backside and then literally just let the lower half look at my knee. My back knee is just down on the ground because I'm driving downhill. And you know, from there on out, it's literally just touch the ball because it's just gonna take off. Oof, baby. That's something yeah, right there, is. man. That's a nice yeah, swing. That, that, yeah, that felt good. That felt good. That's a laser, man. Oh hey. There he is. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> there we'll he is. Dap it up. Uh, look at him. No, but so I love it. I, I, fucked out. <laughs> I love this. Like you did it. You you experimented. You changed. You saw almost immediate results with it, and it produced an all-star appearance. Mm -hmm. And amazingly, the all-star game ends up being in Miami. Right. And you get to do right. that in front of all your family and friends. Right. And spoiler alert, at bat number two, we're gonna show right. the fruits of Yonder's labor. We're gonna take you to the All-Star at bat. Yonder, I appreciate you coming on, taking us through this at Absolutely. bat. Join us for at bat number two coming up.